This video is on two-port models. The purpose of two-port models is to predict the loaded response of a circuit. And we do that with orthogonal components, by which I mean we have two components, and one component models certain parts of the circuit that the other component does not, and vice versa. So when we uh, derive one of the components or one of the parameters, we need to nullify the effects of the other parameter. So for example, when we have a Norton equivalent model, in which case we have a current source in parallel with a resistor, when we derive the current gain of that current source, we need to make sure and nullify the effects of the output resistor. Since we're talking about current, that means that the current through this output resistor needs to be zero. For the current to be zero through a resistor, the voltage needs to be zero, so we need to short the output here. So this is a short circuit test. Now when we derive this output resistance, we need to nullify the effects of the current source. So for that, we look, we look at the signal that controls that current source. In this case, is the input signal. So we need to nullify its effects. We need to make sure that that input signal here is zero. Now, if we have a feminine equivalent model, in which case we have a voltage source in series with a resistor, when we derive the gain of the voltage source, we need to nullify the effects of the resistor. That means that the voltage dropped across this resistor needs to be zero because we're talking about a voltage source. For the voltage to be zero, that means that the current running through it needs to be zero. And the only way for that to happen is when the output is open circuited. So we need to remove the load. This is an open circuit test. Now when we derive the output resistance, we need to nullify the effects of the voltage source. So we look at the signal that controls it, and we basically make sure that that input signal, S sub n in this case, is zero, whether it is a current or a voltage. So let us do an example. In this example, we have a Norton input and a Thevenin output. This is what uh, what's called a reverse hybrid model or a G parameter model. We could also have a Norton input and a Norton output, or a Thevenin input and a Thevenin output, or a Thevenin input and a Norton output. All these variations are perfectly valid, but the same principle applies. So we're going to apply it to this example, which can later be used for any other example. So let us first uh, start with R sub n, the input resistance. When we derive the input resistance, we need to nullify the effects of the current source at the input. We look at the signal that controls that, and that's the output current. So we need to make sure that this output current is zero. So we go to the output. For the output current to be zero, the output needs to be open circuited. So we remove the load. This is a, a, an open circuit test, and it's a forward open circuit test because we're applying the test condition to the right of the circuit to the output. Now, when we derive the current at the input, the, current, uh, the gain of the current source at the input, we need to nullify the effects of the input resistance. Since we're talking about current, that means that the current running through this resistor needs to be zero. The only way for the current through a resistor to be zero is for the voltage to be zero. So in this case, we short the input. This is a short circuit test, and to be more specific, it's a reverse short circuit test because we're applying this test condition to the input to the left of the circuit. Now when we go forward and we derive the gain of the voltage source at the output, we need to nullify the effects of the output resistor. Since we're talking about voltage, that means that the voltage dropped across this output resistor needs to be zero. The only way for that to happen is for the output current to be zero. And we make sure that that is the case by removing 
the load. This is a forward open circuit test. Again, because we're open circuiting the output. Now, when we derive the output resistance here, we need to nullify the effects of the voltage source. For that, we look at the signal that controls it, which is the input signal, and that needs to be zero. So we go all the way back at the input and we short the input. This is a reverse short circuit test. One thing that I, uh, I should note here is when we derive the input resistance here, we nullify the effects of the current source at the input. And those effect, the effects that that produces are basically the result of the output current. This is a form of feedback because whatever is happening at the output, it's being translated all the way to the input. So when we nullify this current source at the input, we're in essence disabling the feedback action. Just like when we derive the output resistance, we're disabling the feed forward action of the voltage source at the output. So each and every one of these parameters on their own are basically what we'll call open loop parameters. That when combined, they can predict the loaded response of the closed loop circuit. In other words, they predict the response of a forward translations and feedback translations. I mention this because we have some amplifiers that we design specifically so that they only have forward translations. So let us do another example and this is a forward only example. In this case, if we look at the input, the input doesn't have a voltage or a current source that is a function of the output. In other words, there's no feedback. So to derive these parameters, we do exactly the same thing. So let's start. Now let's derive the, this input resistance. When we do that, we realize that there are no components that we need to nullify. So we derive that input resistance as is because there is no redundancies to consider. Now when we go forward and we derive the uh, gain of the current source at the output, we need to nullify the effects of the output resistor. Since we're talking about current, that means that the current going through the output resistor needs to be zero. The only way for a current through a for the current through a resistor to be zero is for the voltage to be zero, so we short the output. That is a forward short circuit test. Now when we derive the output resistance, we need to nullify the effects of the current source at the output. So we look at the signal that controls it and we need to make sure that that is zero. So we go back to the input here and we short the input. This is a reverse short circuit test. This Norton model, in essence, is a short circuit model because when we derive the transconductance gain, we short the output. And when we derive the output resistance, we short the input. So it's easy to remember. Thanks for watching.